Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And uh, I've entitled it Climate Change. I started off with global warming, but uh, the thing is, and, and of course this is all a result of this political nonsense, the division we have in this country where we've got two camps and they're each trying to discredit each other all the time. And I heard this argument a long time ago where they said, oh, they changed the name from global warming to climate change because it wasn't warming up the way they said it was going to. And that's just a bunch of garbage, all right? The reason that the name was changed to climate change is that it became very apparent that the effects of the warming of the climate went way beyond just temperature, that it had effects on precipitation and, you know, the drier areas getting drier and the wetter areas getting wetter and more intense hurricanes. And so, Climate change encompassed all of that, as opposed to just simply saying global warming, which only refers to temperature. So wanted to clear that up, that if you hear that argument, then you can toss that in the trash. So uh, let's go on ahead and take a look a little bit closer here at some of these temperature trends. Now, there are two gentlemen, John Christie and, um, oh my gosh, the other name uh, uh, is escaping me right now, but two gentlemen down at the University of Alabama at Huntsville, Roy Spencer. Uh, they were, if not the first, one of the first groups of people to take satellite data. And the satellites, of course, looking at the entire globe, uh, both land and water, and coming up with a temperature record that we could follow. And, and the reason this was so useful is that uh, three quarters of the Earth, as you all know, is covered by oceans, and we don't have nearly the density of data over oceans that we do over the land. And so this was a way to sort of fill in those holes. And as time has gone on, the techniques have been refined in terms of trying to come up with the best temperature estimate there is. But this record goes back to, uh, I believe, December of 1978. So what I did here was I started in May of 1979 and went all the way up through April of 2023 and divided that period of time into four equal parts, okay? Now, before I did that, I plotted this entire record. This is all the way from May of 1979 to April of 2023. And you can see a lot of variance, up and down, up and down, up and down. And where you see these big peaks, uh, this is where huge El Ninos occur. This is the one in 97 and 98. This is the one 2015 and 2016. So when the El Ninos occur, then that tends to inflate the overall you know, global temperature. And, and then when the La Ninas occur, then they tend to deflate the overall global temperature. So you, know, you can definitely see that reflected in the record here. Now, I heard an argument the other day, which also was equally amusing to me, saying, oh, well, the global temperatures have actually decreased since 2016. You know what? You can play tricks with statistics any way you want. And if you start the graph at the highest point on the graph, of course you're going to get a negative trend, all right? So here's the big El Nino in 2015 and 2016. We've had three straight La Ninas since then, so the global temperature has been down. And so if you start the graph at the highest point, of course you're going to say that the trend has been negative since 2016. And that's why you have to look at the long-term record, okay? You just can't cherry-pick the points of time to make whatever argument you're trying to make. So if you look at a linear trend line through all of this data, it is clearly going up. But it's not linear. It's, as you can see there, it's up and down and up and down and up and down. So as I said, I split this up into four equal parts and did a trend line, a linear trend line, for each one of those four periods. So the first one goes from about 1979 to 1990, very slight increase. You could make the argument that there was no significant change there at all. Then from 1990 to 2001, clearly there was a steady increase during that period. Then from 2001 to 2012, it was actually slightly negative during that period of time. And then during the last period from 2012 to 2023, the overall trend has been up. So we're steady, increase, a little bit down, and then increase, okay? Now, this is a very simplistic argument that I'm about to make, but I think it lends some understanding to why we see these kind of variances. So here is your typical sine wave, okay? Uh, and I won't go into the math associated with it, but this is what a sine wave looks like, you know, like that. Okay, so now let's add in a linear function. And this function, uh, let me backtrack. The sine wave, I'm using that to represent 
the natural cycles that we see in temperature patterns. There have always been natural cycles, okay? And so you have period decades where it's warmer than others, decades where it's cooler than others. That is independent of anything man has done, okay? You know, you take the Industrial Revolution out. This has been going on since time began. There are natural cycles, okay? Now, this linear function is going to represent the steady increase in carbon dioxide, and that is well documented. Uh, the most famous record is out uh, at the top of the Big Island in Hawaii, uh, where they've been keeping records since the 1950s, and it is steadily going up. There's no question about that. So, when you add these two functions together, this is what you end up with. Okay, now that's the natural cycle line. That's the steady increase in CO2. And when you add the two functions, look what happens. When they're both going up, the trend is up. When one's going up and one's going down, it levels out. And then when they're both going up again, it goes up again. So it's sort of like a stair step, okay? So the fact that we would see periods of time where it would, the global temperature would increase and then it would level off, maybe even go down a little bit and then increase again is consistent with this idea where we do have natural cycles, but then we superimpose this linear increase in carbon dioxide on top of that. And then when you add those two functions together, this is what you get, this generally a stair-step pattern. Up, levels off, maybe it goes down a little bit and then goes back up again, okay? So, this is something that I've followed for years now, and, uh, and this data, the satellite data record, updates uh, every month. And so the data for May will be coming out very, very soon. And so I just import all this data into Excel and uh, uh, continue to update the analysis. And um, the, I think the overall linear trend for the whole record is 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade, okay? So what would that be? I guess it would take eight decades to go up a degree Celsius, okay, or thereabouts, and uh, you know, uh, 16 decades to go up two degrees Celsius and so forth. And, and that's assuming that the rate of increase remains what it is right now. So I just wanted to bring to your attention that you know, nobody is denying, certainly not I, that there are not natural cycles, okay? And it's also fair to say that the atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere has been warmer than it is right now, okay? There's also been times in the past where there's been most, more CO2 in the air than there is now. All those things are true, okay? The difference now compared to all of these other times is that we haven't seen these kinds of changes, this degree of change over such a short, relatively short period of time. Normally these changes occur over thousands, tens of thousands of years, and we've seen a significant increase in the global temperature over a much shorter time period. That's what makes it unique. But you're still going to have the natural ups and downs, okay? And you can't take any short time period and say, oh, this explains everything. No, you got to look at the long-term average, and that's what really gives you the answer as to what's going on. All right, that is it for now. That's bonus weather video number two for this week. You all have a wonderful weekend, and we will catch you again on Monday with another daily weather update, and the next bonus weather video will be coming up on Tuesday. Take care, everybody, and again, have a great weekend.